Hello, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Sudhakar Sharma. We are continuing our MVC video sessions. In this session, we will continue the part 1 of validations. In part 1, I showed you how do we configure an application to define validations. So, we I will just give an overview here. So, we added a connection string to connect with our data source and uh, that connection string is users connection that connects with the database and uh, we added a model class called register. This register model class is mapping to a registration table that is designed in the database. Now we need to define this register table with all the validations so that contradictionary and unauthorized data is not get stored into the database. We added one more class that is users context which is a DB context. It is responsible for interacting, connecting with the database and interacting with the register table. Now we will see how we can configure validations for the fields so that we can restrict the entry of un unauthorized and contradictionary data. So, I will switch to the register CS. Here we designed a class that is mapping towards the database table and it is defined with all these fields, user ID, name, password, confirm password, age, email and mobile. Now, we need to define validations and make sure that contradictionary data is not get stored into the database. How we can define the validations? Let us see. What are the validation annotations available in MVC? We have a validation required. Required is an attribute, so which is used to define mandatory fields in a form. So, as we already discussed that validations are defined at model level, required is an attribute used to define mandatory fields. So, how we configured this required validator? Let us see. User ID is, uh, is mandatory. So, for the database table because we designated it as a primary key and it cannot be null. So, in the form it is mandatory that user ID need to be entered. So, how you can configure as the mandatory? All the data annotations are actually defined in component model data annotations, component model data annotation schema and uh, we have system dot component model. So, these are the three important references we need in order to map the database table with the classes as well as handle validations. So, the first important validation we are defining is a required validation that is for user ID. The validations are defined as annotations and user ID I am defining as required. required. And uh, every data annotation that you define here is uh, configured with an uh, attributes. Uh, the attribute you can define an error message. Error message, if you do not configure any error message, the default error messages are displayed we can define an error message user ID required. So, whenever the user ID is being set, then it will verify whether the user ID field is having some data inside it or not. If it is empty, null, then uh, it will uh, restrict the data. It will restrict to submit the form because you configured as an required. So, required is an annotation used for mandatory fields and how do we define that required and the error message to display. In our table, I want user ID as a mandatory field, then uh, I configured it with required. Next, another important option is uh, 
we have string length. String length describes the minimum and maximum number of characters that can be entered into any field. Now, what I want here is uh, in this username field, I want to restrict the minimum and maximum number of characters entered into that field. How we can do that by adding an annotation that is a string length. I am defining string length. String length is an annotation, it is expecting the maximum length, it is expecting the maximum length allowed. The maximum length I define as 15 and you need to configure the minimum length by using an attribute minimum length. Minimum length is equal to, minimum length is an integer property, you need to define an integer value for. And uh, if you want to define any error message, then you can configure the error message in a string format and you can say, so user name, user name 4215 cares. Yeah. So if you want to restrict the number of characters that can be entered into any field, that you can do that by using string length. So, string length ensures that, ensures that the input value is between the minimum and maximum number of characters that you have defined. Yeah. Next, another important annotation is a compare. Compare is an annotation which is used to compare the two fields for similar type of value. So, if the field that you are validating is not matching with the value with the compared field then it will return an error. So, if I want to compare two fields with same type of values, then you can do that by using compare. How to configure this compare? I need to go to this password C. Whenever we are dealing with password and confirm password, actually the data type for password is string and confirm password is also string. And whenever we are generating a UI for this string type of fields, then obviously a ordinary text box is generated for them. But uh, I want these two fields to generate a password box so that the characters are masked with password character asterisk. So how you can uh, make this field with additional data type in such a way that it can allow the string type but it should display in a password format that you can do that by adding an additional data type. For password, I am adding a data type and uh, I will put the data type as password. This is an annotation which is used to ensure that the value entered inside this particular field is masked with the password characters. Means we are defining an additional data type for that particular field. The same thing I need for confirm password, then I will use a data type and the data type as a password. Password. Now, the another important point is uh, the confirm password that user entered, it should match with the password. So, in that case, we need a validation for confirm password. By using compare validator, you can do that. So, compare with which field you need to define the property, with which property it should be compared. It must be compared with the property password. If uh, the value entered in the password is not matching with the value entered in the confirm password, then it will evaluate an error message. So, here I will put an error message saying that uh, password mismatch, password mismatch. So, compare is an validation annotation, is an validation annotation, use it to compare the values entered in two different fields and verify whether both are equal. If not, it displays an error message. Another important validation is a range validation. So, in this range validation ensures that the input value is within the specific numeric range of constraints. Like you can see age, I want between 15 to 30, then I can configure this age with a range validator. This range validator is expecting a double minimum value that is 15 and a double maximum value that is 30 and an error message saying that uh, age, age 15 to 30 only. So, the range validation annotation is used to define the numeric range constraints that can be entered into any field. So, 
we are configuring a required validation string length compare and range and similarly so we have another important is here already we defined a data type for the password i want email to be verified whether it is in a proper email format or not actually that you can do by using a data type annotation the data type annotation called email address this ensures that the input value is in a valid email format if it is not in a email val format then it returns an error so you want to verify the format of email that you can directly do by using data type but here i want to verify the format of mobile starting with plus 91 and a 10 digit number then uh, i can i can't define this by using data type then i can use a regular expression regular expression is an validation annotation that uses a pattern to verify the input value it will verify whether the input value is matching with the requested pattern or not if not then it returns an error message so how do we validate the pattern of input value let us add a regular expression for mobile regular expression actually regular expression is expecting a pattern and you know that the patterns are built by using meta characters and quantifiers and here I am using a meta character and uh, meta characters and quantifiers require so many special characters to be used and in C sharp we have escape sequence issues then better start this with an verbatim character at the net you know the verbatim character at the net which will allow you to use the strings in a plain format so avoiding escape sequence issues so here i will use slash plus 91 and end 0 hyphen 9 and 10 digit number so make sure that the value that entered inside this particular field is according to the specific format if not then we can display an error message saying that invalid mobile mobile this is what we can configure by using regular expression so the validation annotations that are available in mvc to validate the input values so we have a required validator string length compare range and regular expression you can see that those all validations we configured here user id is using a required validation and the username is using a string length validation ensures that the input name is between 4 to 5 characters. Password and confirm password are using additional data types to mask the characters into password mode. And uh, confirm password is using a compare validation, which is comparing the input value with the password and returns a password mismatch if not. And uh, age is using a range validation to make sure that the age entered is between 15 to 30 and uh, email address is using an additional data type called email address to verify that the email is in a correct format or not and mobile is using a regular expression to verify the format of input value and make sure that the input value is according to the specific format so we defined all the basic annotations that are used for validating the fields now we need to prepare a user interface to interact with the data and see whether these validations are correctly handled or not that we will discuss in the next session. Thank you.